Hey, um, I'm very sorry to everybody if I came across um, super abrasive with uh, Governor DeSantis, Ron DeSantis. Didn't mean it at all. Like, my perspective is very niche. It's a very specialized perspective. I spent over two decades in the military um, as an enlisted peon. And I do mean peon. I lost my career as a DOD whistleblower when I blew the whistle on General Atomics in January of 2020. Yeah, not fun, but very fucking scary. So my perspective, again, very, very niche. It's so niche that I don't even expect certain members of Congress to understand it. This is not um, a rote thing. It's highly con conceptual. It's highly abstract. And it's developed after years and years of, I guess, exposure to the material. Um, so in the military, we are a profession of arms. Um, really hard to define what that means. It's, it's not a rote list of things necessarily that you can memorize and rattle off. It's um, it's more along the lines of um, a very abstract conceptual framework. Um, so with that in mind, the military is a profession of arms. And what I'm about to explain, I I mean, there, there I know people, I know officers who don't have an understanding of what I'm about to explain. Um, so Ron DeSantis is the governor of Florida, right? Okay. Well, we have a representative from the sixth district, I believe my, my former, um, district before I relocated to Kansas city, Missouri, um, representative Mike Waltz. Now the thing with Mike Waltz that a lot of civilians might not understand, and even some military, especially younger subordinates might not understand. Mike Waltz is a uniformed service member. He's an 06, that's Colonel in the army, and he is a Green Beret and he's serving in Congress. Here's why that's a problem. When Mike, when Mike Waltz ran for that district, there's no way that he didn't not have subordinate personnel living in that district while he was running. Yeah, so in the military, that's a big fucking no-no. There's a reason why we're not supposed to be serving while uniformed. Here's how the Guard and Reserves get around it. They use their staff judge advocate wickets, and especially the Guard, because the Guard can dump themselves onto so many different titles. You got Title 10, you got Title 32, you got Title 5. Um, and they can pick and choose, but there's no way for DeSantis to get around this one. So Mike Waltz, whether he, he's on Title 32, he's likely Title 32 right now. Um, um, Mike Waltz um, had to get approval from his commander in chief. And the commander in chief of every state guard, every national guard for every state, and that comprises the Army National Guard and the Air National Guard, is always the governor of that state. So Representative Mike Waltz is a uniformed service member serving himself in brackets in Congress. He's also a DOD contractor and was very, very pro-Ukraine nuclear escalation. Yeah, because he wanted to do what he did in Afghanistan and steamroll and carpet bag his way through the Ukraine, uh, specifically the Crimea. Um, Kiev's doing just fine. Um, yeah, so he had to get approval from his commander in chief and his commander in chief in a title 32 aspect is Ron DeSantis. Yeah, Ron DeSantis had to approve that. So basically we have a guy who should never have constitutionally never should have run in the first place. That is fascism. When you have a seated military member in Congress who ran in a district where he no doubt, there's no way he doesn't have subordinate personnel in that district that he ran in. Huge, huge, huge issue. And there's no way that there weren't whistleblowers in his unit. I would, I would canvass the enlisted um, body in his unit in the Florida National Guard, his specific unit, and um, see what they have to say. Oh, people absolutely came forward about this, but they were gatekeeped. Their 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 allegations were gatekeeped. They were harmed. Uh, they 
probably had adverse administrative actions or worse. Hopefully they didn't experience anything like I did because I don't wish that on anybody. Um, but um, Representative Mike Waltz got approval from his commander in chief, Ron DeSantis, to run in a district while a uniformed officer and a Green Beret at that um, should never have been approved, ever. Ron DeSantis is gonna play the, oh, well, the adjutant general approved it, bullshit. The adjutant general of each state is hand-picked and appointed by the governor. That's a, that's a gubernatorial appointment. So yeah, Ron DeSantis absolutely did approve this. And, and here's how I can reinforce that further. Ron DeSantis was a JAG, a judge advocate. Yeah, he has extensive experience in the staff judge advocate world. Yes, uh-huh, so staff judge advocate for all civilians not watching this from home is basically senior ranking military officials built in attorney. They don't have to pay for this. Like they get this expertise, this world-class expertise from um, military law experts like DeSantis. DeSantis is absolutely a military law expert. DeSantis absolutely, absolutely has an understanding of the profession of arms commensurate to mine, if not greater. So he doesn't get to slip out of that one either. Um, I don't care for the man, but credit where credit is due. DeSantis was a brilliant jag, a brilliant jag. He cut a name, he made a name for himself as a brilliant jag. Now that might seem really cool and wonderful to civilians sitting at home, but I'm telling you from an enlisted peon military perspective, when you guys see in the headlines that somebody was a brilliant jag, it was probably at the expense of enlisted military peons like me. Yeah, he probably was able to find loopholes and set pretty, you know, barely out of the box precedents. Um, yeah, and he went on to be the governor of Florida. Um, that's, that's why I censure Governor DeSantis so badly. He is running a de facto dictatorship. When you have a, an elected official, a member of Congress, a seated representative who answers directly to the governor of his state, his commander in chief in a military aspect or capacity, that's bad. That is profoundly unconstitutional. His, military always comes first. Yeah, it doesn't matter if you're Title 32 or Title 10 or Title 5, military always comes first. I mean, even Title 32, you could foreseeably be mobilized. And while there is sometimes wiggle room and they do generally vet for um, volunteers first, there are some situations that they don't give a fuck. They need bodies. So yeah, he, he, they're not getting out of this one. That is deeply, deeply unconstitutional. My perspective of, in my experience and orientation and knowledge of, and rather profession, I mean, it, it it's absolutely a profession in the sense that professors profess their expertise of what they've been studying. It's a profession of arms. Um, and I can speak rather fluently on the topic. Um, barring legalese, I, I, I'm, I don't know legalese, but I can speak fluently on the topic of the profession of arms. Yeah, absolutely. Um, after nearly 23 years, God, I should hope so. Um, yeah. What Ron DeSantis is doing is deeply unconstitutional. They have a closed loop system of government. Yeah, yep. Mike Waltz, Representative Mike Waltz, answers directly to his governor, not his constituents. That's a problem. That needs to, we need to generate awareness. We need to hold these people accountable. Now, credit where credit is due, did DeSantis do a good job on handling COVID? Absolutely. Yes, he did. In fact, I, I will even go one step further and say that when the hurricane hit in October, um, I thought he did a really good job. Credit where credit is due. And I was actually like, you know, maybe I'm going to try to keep an open mind about DeSantis. No. Um, DeSantis has... I'm a DOD whistleblower and I blew the whistle on some of his very powerful cronies. Um, Let's start with um, General Atomics, which is a fancy way of saying Honeywell, because every time General Atomics manufactures a um, 
an MQ-9 for the Air Force, Honeywell gets the profit because General Atomics is a private company and Honeywell is a public, publicly traded defense contractor. Um, so yeah, I, I pissed a lot of campaign donors off. Um, and the fact that I kept kicking, because, you know, once a whistleblower, you might as well keep going with it. I, I, you know, I mean, journalism, it shouldn't even be called whistleblowing. It should be called journalism. What I did was journalism. I reported and I reported with um, facts and evidence what was going on in my guard unit and my command in DOD in the Air Force and the past year in Congress. Um, yeah, that should be called journalism, not whistleblowing, but whatever, whatevs. Nobody loves a whistleblower, so take that with a grain of salt. Anyway, I hope that explains. I could, I could talk on this topic literally for days. So if anybody not watching this from home has any questions, like specific questions or needs further clarification, please like throw it out there. I will fill in the blanks. I don't want to inundate because it's a lot. Um, and the profession of arms um, conceptual framework can be rather dry and rather boring to people who don't give a fuck. To me, it's fascinating. I, I love theory. I love abstract shit. So I'm fascinated by it. I, I could think about it all day long um, and never get bored. But um, other people might. So, yeah. Um, so if you have any questions or need me to clarify or further explain a concept that I wasn't clear on, please let me know. I will revert with as best an explanation as I can um, with the time that I have. Um, thank you so much for allowing me to explain my perspective. It's not an ins like it's not a dig on anybody else. I don't expect any like very few people, very few Americans have the awareness and can speak with fluency of regarding the profession of arms. Very Even politicians, even elected officials, even senators. I don't even expect most senators who have never served to understand that framework. And they're abs it's not just, you know, some pie in the sky abstract idea. There is a legal grounding in it. Yeah, this, I mean, and that's something Folks like DeSantis and, and Waltz and Gallagher and Vance and Gabbard, uh, Cheryl, Cheryl, I'm sorry, Houlihan, Lur Luria is another one. Who else? I feel like I, Graham, Lindsey Graham is a bad one. Oh, he's a bad example. Ooh, Lindsey Graham. I could, I, I could go, Lindsey Graham, Ron DeSantis, Mike Waltz, all the same. You're talking about the same fucking people. Mm hmm. Yep. Anyway, I got to get going. Thank you for letting me give my two cents. I hope it's enlightening. Um, if I'm fucking something up, please let me know. I'm a royal fuck up. But anyway, this royal fuck up has to get going. I, I got a I got some errands to run and the weather's going to be nice. I don't want to be stuck inside all day. All right. Peace.